Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video I'm going to be going through the tips and tricks of bevels that you never got told about. So the vast majority of tutorials that I've seen on bevels just tell you the basics. Control and B to bevel, you can scroll up and down to change the number of segments, move your mouse sideways to change how much width there is, and if you're lucky that tutorial will mention that you can also change the profile using the box in the bottom left hand corner, and just so you know if you do that the standard bevel is at 0.5. You can also do this once you press Ctrl and B if you press the P key to change the profile, though I generally find it's useful to do it here because the perfect concave bevel is 0.085 in my experience. So it's quite useful to be able to type that in. So the point of this video is to go through the beveling tricks that don't get mentioned in most tutorials. In fact, I think I've rarely seen these mentioned ever. It's taken me quite a few years to pick these up, and I should mention that these are relatively situational in terms of when you're going to need to use them. But having said that, it's good to get into correct habits so that if they do come up, you're already in a position where it's not going to be an issue. So let's go into the first one. I'm just going to select these two edges and I'm going to press Ctrl and B to bevel them. And my first tip is at the bottom here, you can see that you've got the number of segments. And this should always be, in my opinion, what I refer to as a byte number of segments. So that means what you'd normally buy, let's say, a USB stick in. So they double each time. Either 2, or 4, or 8, or 16, or 32, or 64, or 128, or 256, or if you really need to go there, 512. I guess maybe you could get up to 1024 at some point, but that's probably not really likely. Now, I'm going to bring this down to 8 just so that we can talk through why. Now, again, as I said, situational at best, but I find this very, very important. I generally model for 3D printing, which means that suddenly I might decide that I want to increase the size of this or decrease the size of this, and therefore I want to change the resolution on these bevels. A common situation that I want to be using sub D or something like that. So what's really nice to be able to do with this combination is that if I select these, I can go to select, check a D select, and it will always mean that I've got this and this edge, which if you notice is holding the shape, if I go into vertex mode, is holding the shape of this edge. If I was to dissolve these, these would not be perfectly horizontal or vertical. So the ability to select all those, select, check a deselect, means that I can then press Ctrl and X to dissolve those out and I'm dropping the resolution. Now the reason the byte numbers are important is because I can keep doing this to the point where I get down to just one vertex. Or if I really need to, I can get to the point where we have a perfect chamfer. Now the other thing that we can do, but the byte numbers is slightly less important for this, is we can also select all of the edges on the side, so let's go there, and then we can control E and subdivide these to then get to the next number. Now do bear in mind that when you do this, if I just come into side view or move to the side, these ones in the middle aren't actually changing the resolution of this, it's still only got eight segments. But if I come in here and select all of these other than the last two, we can use a free add-on called Set Flow. If I come here, right click and then Set Flow to create this. And I normally up the iterations a bit to get this a little bit smoother. So you can come in and do this. And again, you can do this repeatedly. And importantly, if we select all of these, select and then check a deselect, we can once again reduce down if we need to. So these byte numbers are really useful in terms of your flexibility of being able to change the resolution of your object. Now I will mention if I come into face mode, the, if you've got Mesh Machine, this is relatively irrelevant. Mesh Machine is a paid for add-on. Everything I've spoken about so far is free, but with Mesh Machine, you can just go to Y and you can go to Refuse and you can just scroll up and down on the amount of segments that you want. So this becomes relatively unneeded if you do have Mesh Machine because you can come all the way down to one. So if you've got that, maybe this isn't something to massively consider or to be concerned about. To be honest, I still do it anyway, and I very much do this on cylinders because on cylinders, mesh machine won't work very successfully. So tip two is to be very aware of the limitations of the clamp overlap function. So let's talk about why. Right, I'm just going to bring in a cube here. Let's scale this up a little bit and then scale it on the Y axis. And then I'm just going to grab this face and then bring it up a bit and then apply the scale. So I'm going to bring in a cube and we're going to make an arch. So let's just scale that up a little bit, scale that a lot in the X. And this is going to be our archway that we're going to be cutting out of this object. 
Let's just apply the scale so that our bevel doesn't look messed up. Actually thinking about that, I should probably mention this in terms of a tutorial. Though normally again, this is covered. If I scale up my object and you can see my scale is different here, if I go to an edge and bevel it, it is not a correct bevel. It doesn't look right. That is because I've not applied the scale. If I come in here and then apply the scale and go to this edge, you can see that now that is a correct looking bevel. So do make sure you always apply your scale. Anyway, back to this, let's apply the scale. So what I'm gonna do is go into edge mode, select those, control and B to bevel, and they overshoot, and I'm gonna press C to clamp overlap, which means that I can get this really nice circular looking top to my object, effectively making an arch. So what I'm gonna do now is just Boolean this out of this object. So click, shift click, and I'm using ball tool, so I'm gonna control and minus, and that's Boolean this out. Except for we've got a problem here. You can see that it's deleted all these inside faces, which is gonna cause me a problem. So let's go back a stage and work out why that's happened. I'm actually gonna shift and D and move that along the Y axis, just so I've got two versions of this because there's two solutions. So the issue here is that when you do a clamp overlap, your bevels bring your points together at the top, and this means that you have two vertices on top of each other. So when you do this, if I come into my 3D print toolbox and click check all, you can see that we have an issue with a non-flat face here. And that is this face, well, we've also got a zero face. This is this face that basically is so small here that it doesn't exist because the points are perfectly on top of each other. And that's what's causing our problem. We can solve this in two real ways. The first way is you just go into vertex mode A, M, and then merge by distance. And that has now removed this vertex that's on top of each other. And now I can control and minus, and we've got our perfect Boolean. Whereas our original object is still causing this problem. The other way we can do this, if we just come into vertex mode, is if you've got machine tools, which is a free add-on, it's fantastic, it's what gives me this really cool pie menu for flipping between things, as well as a lot of other things. For example, if I shift an S, you get this really nice version of moving the cursor and the object origin around. But one of the important things it does is if I press three, it has a cleanup tool, which is going to remove all those additional verts that are on top of each other. And you can see here that that has instantly fixed that problem as well. So if you ever do clamp overlap, make sure you merge by distance or use your machine tools cleanup. And that brings us on to the final tip, which is to do with cylinders. So if I bring in a cylinder, let's just scale that up a bit and scale that on the Z axis a bit and then apply the scale. You can also use this when you're beveling cylinders. So let's just bevel these two faces, Control and B. If I don't have C on for my clamp overlap, they'll overlap, which is gonna be horrible. I can press that and they'll perfectly go to the center. Same issue again that I've got now got a million vertices on top of each other, well 32, so we're going to need to clean this up. Except I would recommend that you never take your cylinders to the point where they are perfectly beveled on the top like this. So I'm just gonna go back one and I'm gonna Control and B one more time and I'm gonna to get to the point where the circle on the top is approximately the same size as all of the other segments, so somewhere about there, though that's not hugely important. Now I will mention one thing. The first is that this does create an engon at the top, which some people are gonna have a heart attack about, so it does depend on your usage here. So why am I suggesting if this can cause a problem that you leave this face? Well, again, very niche circumstance, but let's say I rotate this round to put it where I want it to be, and then sort of move it around somewhere here. And then at some point I apply the rotation and scale because sometimes it happens. Now, if I was to apply this rotation and scale and I had this going to a point, I now have no faces that were perfectly in this original orientation. If I just bring in a new cylinder, what I mean by that is in a cylinder, this face at the top is perfectly oriented flat to all of our axes. None of these edges here are, they're all off to one side, at least if you stick to the rule of having this byte number of segments. So why is this a problem? Well, if I decide that I want to move this perfectly in the Z axis or one of the other axes, I can't do that. I mean, I can. What you can do is come in and work out which one is the edge that was perfectly on the side, but you don't know which one that was, so that's a problem. Uh, though you can use these to move in the Z axis, you just come up here and give yourself a new edge axis. 
And then if I come down and add in my gimbal, you can see that now we've got a way of moving in that Z axis, except for it's called it the Y axis. So we can do that if we need to. But the reason I like having this face at the top is that if I select that face, let's go into face mode, and I press shift and seven, I'm now perfectly centered on this face, meaning that now I can move this in all other directions related to this face. Importantly, I can also come up here and change this to view and in object mode G and then Z this towards me or away from me Though you won't be able to see that this is happening, but it is happening. Or I can just press G and move this perfectly flat to this face, which again is very rare to come up, but on the times it has come up, it's completely saved me being able to do this. So I do really recommend you keeping one of those top faces just because it gives you something that you can view onto with shift and seven, and it gives you that just a little bit more control. So there you go, three tips that rarely get spoken about when using bevels. As always, if you found that useful, please do hit that like button so other people are more likely to see the video. Subscribe if you want to see more videos and press the bell button so that you know when those videos are released. And if you do want to see more videos on either Mesh Machine or Machine Tools, which we've used in this video, I'll put some links to playlists on those in the description. Have a great day, guys.